the U.S. government have declared an emergency after their largest fuel pipeline was hit by a ransomware cyber attack. The Colonial Pipeline carries 2.5 million barrels a day, 45% of the East Coast's supply of diesel, petrol and jet fuel. The US government has relaxed its rules on fuel being transported by road. This ransomware attack was likely to have been caused by a cyber criminal gang called Darkside. The incident highlights the risk ransomware can pose to critical national industrial infrastructure. But how did this attack occur? A group called Digital Shadows have said the colonial pipeline attack was helped by the coronavirus pandemic. With more engineers remotely accessing control systems for the pipeline from their homes. But who were the cyber criminal gang? According to Digital Shadows, the gang is likely to be based in a Russian speaking country because it avoids attacking companies in post Soviet states, including Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, Georgia, Armenia, Kazakhstan, and Uzbekistan. They are currently holding the US hostage, but they're not the only ones to play this game. This is the story of a CIA operation to sabotage the Soviet Union. Tricking Moscow into stealing booby trapped software that triggered the world's largest non nuclear explosion in the main Siberian gas pipeline and helped to destroy the emerging Soviet economy. In the 1980s, Ronald Reagan called the Soviet Union an evil empire. This chilly rhetoric froze US and Soviet relations in an already cold war. Siberia has one of the world's largest gas fields, but it's thousands of miles away from their potential customers in Western Europe. The UK was desperate to get more gas, as Margaret Thatcher had decimated the coal industry and had turned the electricity generation plants onto natural gas. But there was not enough North Sea gas to supply the long-term needs of the UK. A new deal with Russia promised an endless supply of gas, coming down the new Siberian pipeline and connecting to the German gas network and then onto the rest of Europe. The Reagan administration wanted to cripple the Soviet economy by stopping the gas flowing and so stopping Western currency being paid to Russia. The CIA came up with an audacious plan to economically cripple the Soviet Union by closing down their natural gas industry. William Casey, CIA director, described the mission as cold-eyed economic warfare.
The Russian pipeline was robust, large, but old-fashioned. Pumping stations and valve gear were controlled from remote centers. Many of these systems relied on basic analog signals sent over phone lines to turn on or off pumps and valves. A KGB agent in France named Vladimir Vetrov was approaching Western companies for software to update the Soviet gas pipe network. His efforts to purchase or steal Western technology came to the attention of the CIA. The USA, using a team of hackers, cleverly wrote bogus industrial machine code software and sold it to the KGB spy. The software was installed and after a pre-programmed delay of a few days, the bogus software cleverly started to sabotage the pumps and valves along the Siberian pipeline. A CIA report states, our software made the pumps go haywire, causing enormous pressure buildup in the pipe. In 1982, the most monumental non-nuclear explosion and fire ever seen was observed in Siberia. The blast was clearly visible by space-based spy satellites, and even seismic stations used to record earthquakes. the project exceeded the CIA's wildest dreams. There were no reported casualties in the explosion, but it was so dramatic that the first reports are said to have stirred alarms in Washington of a Russian nuclear explosion or accident. The Russian spy Vladimir Petrov was implicated in procuring the bogus software and was executed. On the 29th of November 2010, Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad stated that a computer virus had caused problems with the controller handling his nuclear centrifuges at the Natanz facility. This is now known to be another CIA virus attack and became known as Operation Stuxnet. Today, cyber warfare is a global phenomenon the US and Europe spend millions trying to protect critical infrastructure from attack. Enemies and rogue states are constantly looking for clever ways to cripple our banking, communication or basic infrastructure. Next time you lose the internet or have a serious power cut, wonder if this is a planned attack and not just the neighborhood tree falling down. Temporary Duty Handbook, a guide for traveling to site. Eternal Blue. The purpose of this handbook is to provide proper procedures and guidelines when traveling on official business. Is collaborated to enable the delivery of 700 Eternal Blue is a cyber attack exploit developed by the U.S. National Security Agency, or NSA. Blarney engineers and analysts indicate high quality in both voice over IP and video teleconference collection. It exploits a vulnerability in Microsoft's implementation of the server message block SMB protocol. This vulnerability is donated by an entry CVE-217 
0144 in the Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures CVE Catalog. The vulnerability exists because of the SMB version 1 server in various versions of Microsoft Windows mishandles specially created packets from remote attackers. No one should ever have contact with a leasing company. The NSA did not alert Microsoft about the vulnerabilities and held on to this as a weapon for more than five years before the breach forced its hand. According to Microsoft, it was the United States NSA that was totally responsible. Purposes, FBI recommends following an indirect route between NSA and covert sites. The agency has refused to discuss or even acknowledge that they lost control of Eternal Blue cyber weapon to a small, unidentified group calling itself the Shadow Boxes. Unless reporting your identity could compromise an operation or site. To this day, the FBI still do not know whether the shadow boxes are foreign spies or disgruntled NSA insiders. All parties to provide correct and accurate information. Eternal Blue first installs itself in a private network, then conceals internet activity to access hidden servers. After a brief 24-hour incubation period, the server then responds to the malware request by downloading and self-replicating on the host machine. The malware even names itself WannaCry to avoid detection from security researchers. By the end of 2018, millions of Microsoft systems are still vulnerable to Eternal Blue. tool is hitting the cities of the United States. In May 2019, Baltimore struggled with a cyber attack by digital extortionists exploiting Eternal Blue. The attack froze thousands of computers, shut down email and disrupted real estate sales water bills, health alerts, and many other city services. Eternal Blue relies on a flaw in Microsoft software. Though the company had issued a patch, many systems remained vulnerable two years later. Before it was leaked, Eternal Blue was one of the most useful exploits in the NSA cyber arsenal. The analysts spent almost a year finding a flaw in Microsoft software and writing code to target it. Last year Microsoft, along with Google and Facebook, joined 50 countries in signing on to a similar call by French President Emmanuel Macron the Paris call for trust and security in cyberspace to end malicious cyber activities in peacetime. Notably absent were the world's most aggressive cyber actors, China, Iran, Israel, North Korea, Russia, and the United States. The truth is out there.